हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सुरेश अग्रवाल्स मैथमेटिक्स शॉर्टकट्स यू हैव बीन वाचिंग वीडियोस बेस्ड ऑन द पॉलिनोमियल्स चैप्टर दिस चैप्टर ऑफ एल्जेब्रा इट फाइंड्स एप्लीकेबिलिटी इन क्लास टेंथ स्पेशली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर बोर्ड एग्जाम्स एंड आई एम श्योर इन ऑल द क्वान्टिटेटिव एप्टीट्यूड एग्जाम्स द टॉपिक ऑफ क्वारटिक पॉलिनोमियल्स फाइंड एप्लीकेबिलिटी and there will not be any board exam you know you can check the last 10 years papers in which this topic of a relationship between the zeros and the coefficients of a quadratic polynomial does not exist it surely will exist as a one mark two mark or three mark question and therefore this particular video of class 10 assumes importance so watch the entire video you are going to learn something really really useful today and before i take up these things you know i want you to be sharp in your basic calculations and that is why i stress so much on the beginner level vedic maths video course now you know even the students who are preparing for higher examinations like cat and jee you know all those exams will involve higher calculations and if you are not very good in and smart in your basic addition multiplication squaring division you know then it is going to be a struggle uh, finding the percentages or finding uh, the questions of ratios and proportions and then discount profit and loss uh, speed and time you know those are basic topics which everybody asks in the competitions right so that is why this particular complete beginner level vedic maths video course has been brought out and it is you know this can be done uh, at school level even class 3 4 students can do this and if you develop these tendencies uh, you know mental addition subtraction multiplication division divisibility right at that level you will be amazing when you grow up and uh, go into your class 9th and 10th and when you pass out of the school the placement exams are just going to be a cake walk for you so 61 explanatory videos have been given in, in this uh, video course all concepts and illustrations 114 worksheets with answer key and got more it develops 10 times faster speed of calculations so if you are interested in this do send me a message on whatsapp 9896367963 that is the number you can get some best offers uh, you know uh, through this whatsapp number let's have the questions in hand now the first question is find the zeros of the given quadratic polynomial and verify the relationship between zeros and their coefficients now first of all we will talk about the relationship Now see, whenever there is a quadratic polynomial a x square plus b x plus c equal to zero, this is the standard form of a quadratic equation. So if you remove this equal to zero from here, I'll do it for you. If you remove this equal to zero, it will get converted to a quadratic polynomial. Now this quadratic polynomial has two zeros because the degree is two, therefore it has two zeros, right? Let's assume that these two zeros are represented by alpha and beta. Now you can see the coefficients of uh, the terms here. X square. The coefficient is a. The coefficient of x is b, and the constant term is c. So we can identify a, b, and c from the polynomial. And these three coefficients actually have a relationship with these two zeros of the quadratic polynomial. And what are those two relationships? The first one is The sum of zeros, that is alpha plus beta, is always equal to negative coefficient of x, that is b, upon coefficient of x square, that is a. And the second relationship is when you multiply the zeros, you will get the constant term c divided by the coefficient of x square a. Now this is the very important relationship between the zeros and the coefficients of a. quadratic polynomial so you should remember sum of zeros is always negative coefficient of x over coefficient of x square and product of zeros is always equal to the constant term upon the coefficient of x square now once you know this relationship we can get into this question you can see the quadratic polynomial given here so i'll solve it for you here now first he wants us to find the zeros right find the zeros so for finding the zeros you have to equate The polynomial equal to zero, and just split the middle term. I think you know the basic method of splitting the middle term and uh, uh, breaking the middle term into two uh, factors. So 
इन दिस केस फाइव एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस टेन प्लस टू विल वर्क राइट माइनस टेन प्लस टू इज माइनस एट एंड माइनस टेन टाइम्स टू इज फाइव टाइम्स माइनस फोर माइनस ट्वेंटी सो दैट दिस वर्क फॉर मी एंड सो आई हैव ए फाइव एक्स एज ए कॉमन फैक्टर गिव्स मी एक्स माइनस टू देन टू एज ए कॉमन फैक्टर गिव्स मी एक्स माइनस टू एंड सो दिस एक्स माइनस टू इज ए कॉमन ब्रैकेट विच फॉर्म्स द फर्स्ट फैक्टर एंड फाइव एक्स प्लस टू इज द अदर फैक्टर Now, if I put them separately equal to zero, I will get x minus two equal to zero, which gives me x equal to two. And if I put five x plus two equal to zero, I will get five x equals negative two. That means x is negative two upon five. So here I have the two zeros of the quadratic polynomial. So how did I find it out? I found it out by using the method of splitting the middle term. Now he wants us to verify. The relationship between zeros and their coefficients. So let's let me make some space here. Now, if you see all these things, you know which I have written here. This is just finding the zeros, and the other part is verifying the relationship. So for verifying the relationship, the coefficients here, a is five. See. B is minus four and C is so minus eight and C is minus four. So I'll write all the coefficients A, B, and C. Okay, and alpha and beta. These are the two zeros. So alpha is two and beta is minus two by five. Okay. Now let's check whether we can verify the relationship or not. The first thing is alpha plus beta. So if I add alpha and beta. I am going to get 10 minus 2, 8. So this is 8 by 5, right? And if I find minus b upon a, this will be minus b is minus 8 upon a is 5. So that is again 8 upon 5. So you can see from these two, you can infer that alpha plus beta is equal to minus b over a, which verifies the first relationship. And likewise, the second relationship, you have to find alpha beta. That is. Uh, the product of two and minus two over five, and that gives me minus four over five, right? And finally, c over a, c is minus four, right? And over a is five. So you can put the values from here, and you see these two are exactly same. And from this, we can infer that alpha beta, that is product of zeros, is always equal to c over a. Now this is called the verification of relationship between the coefficients of the polynomial and the zeros of the polynomial very important question you can take a screenshot and i'm sure you are you're going to get one question like this in the board exams let's see the next question find a quadratic polynomial so now he wants us to find the quadratic polynomial whose zeros are minus 3 and 5 so in the solution we will write the zeros as alpha and beta okay now he wants us to find the quadratic polynomial whose zeros are already given again we are going to use the relationship between zeros and coefficients but indirectly so first i will find s s is the sum of zeros that is alpha plus beta so minus 3 plus 5 that is 2 then i am going to find the product that is alpha beta which is minus 3 times 5 and that is minus 15 Now, once I get the values of s and p, the sum and product of zeros, I can find a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation is x square minus sum x plus product equal to zero. Now, this is the standard form. When you you know the sum and product of the uh, zeros, then you just have to put the sum and Product here to get the quadratic equation because I put a zero here. Okay, now there is a uh, particular reason why I put a zero here. I tell you later. Let's put the values here. X square minus sum. Where is sum? Sum is two. X plus product. Product is minus fifteen equal to zero. That means x square minus two x minus fifteen equal to zero is the quadratic equation. Now I put this equal to zero here because You know, sometimes the sum and product can be in fractions, and when it is in fractions, you need to make sure that you remove the fraction, okay, and answer it in a uh, in a form where 
a b and c are integers and that is why i used equal to 0 because if i have equal to 0 i can actually take the lcm in case of fractions and get rid of those fractions but in this case no problem at all the quadratic polynomial with zeros what were the zeros minus 3 and 5 is so you just need to remove the equal to 0 because we already have it in integer form x square minus 2x minus 15 is the correct answer for this particular question right quite easy right but you have to solve lots and lots of questions to feel comfortable with the concept okay next up we have uh, another question where you have relationship between uh, the zeros and the coefficients being used here so this one is here I will just write it here so that it is more clear so px equals 2x square minus 3x plus 1 now this is the quadratic polynomial alpha and beta are the zeros of this quadratic polynomial and so we need to find the values of some expressions here again the relationship so all questions are based on relationships only okay so in this question if you see the quadratic polynomial 2x square minus 3x plus 1 right so a is 2 b is minus 3 and c is 1 so alpha plus beta will be minus b over a so minus b over a that is 3 by 2 and alpha beta will be c over a that is 1 by 2 so i know the values of alpha plus beta and alpha beta now he wants us to find the first part alpha square plus beta square the trick here is you know whatever expression we are given to find like here we are finding alpha square plus beta square you should know how to reduce these three expressions in terms of alpha plus beta and alpha beta because those values are already known to you so reducing alpha square plus beta square in this in these two forms then alpha cube plus beta cube in these two forms and alpha minus beta in these two forms is the uh, you know secret behind the success uh, in solving such questions for the first part alpha square plus beta square can be derived from alpha plus beta whole square so alpha plus beta whole square is alpha square plus beta square plus 2 alpha beta so if i subtract 2 alpha beta from this i'll get alpha square plus beta square and now i have to just put the values what is alpha plus beta it is 3 by 2 right so 3 by 2 square minus 2 what is alpha beta it is 1 by 2 so what is uh, the value here this is 9 by 4 minus 1 and that is 5 by 4 which is the answer for this particular question so knowing this identity is uh, is the is must for you know solving this first part let's have the second part we have to find alpha cube plus beta cube again you have to derive this identity from alpha plus beta whole cube and alpha plus beta whole cube and now if you know a plus b whole cube it is a cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square plus b cube right you can actually derive a cube plus b cube from that and for that you just have to subtract 3 alpha beta alpha plus beta right now if you know this identity next step is just put the value alpha plus beta is 3 by 2 so 3 by 2 cube is 27 by 8 minus 3 times alpha beta is 1 by 2 here and then alpha plus beta is 3 by 2 so what is the answer 27 by 8 minus 9 by 4 gives me an LCM of 8 so 27 minus 18 right 27 minus 18 is 9 so 9 by 8 happens to be the answer for the second part likewise the third part alpha minus beta now the identity alpha minus beta is derived from alpha plus beta whole square now that's something very important because this is where the students get stuck so square root of alpha plus beta whole square minus 4 alpha beta now you can actually check alpha plus beta whole square will have plus 2 alpha beta here when you expand this and minus 4 alpha beta will convert that to minus 2 alpha beta so this is going to get converted to alpha minus beta whole square and so the square root will make it alpha minus beta now put the values you have square root of 
alpha plus beta is 3 by 2 right so 3 by 2 square is 9 by 4 minus 4 times 1 by 2 is 2 and so this is square root of 9 minus 8 1 uh, uh, 1 right so 1 by 4 which is 1 by 2 that is the answer for this question see all the identities they work here and if you don't know the identities obviously you have to work on your algebra skills of class 8th and 9th only then you can solve these type of questions let's see another one if alpha and beta are the zeros of the polynomial this so the polynomial is given as 2x square plus 5x plus k so a is 2 b is 5 and c is k right um, alpha and beta are the zeros so alpha plus beta is minus b over a and alpha beta is c over a so k over 2 so i know the values of alpha plus beta and alpha beta now let's see what is given here this statement alpha plus beta whole square minus alpha beta is 24 so i know the values of alpha plus beta and alpha beta right so i'll put the values here alpha plus beta is minus 5 by 2 so minus 5 by 2 whole square minus alpha beta is k by 2 so k by 2 equal to 24 now this reduces to a linear equation in one variable which you can solve easily this is 25 by 4 minus 24 equal to k by 2 uh, 25 minus 96 upon 4 equal to k by 2 so that 2 cancels out here right so the value of k comes out to be 96 minus 25 is 71 right so negative 71 by 2 happens to be the correct answer for the value of k here. 